Hi, in previous videos we have dealt with the origin of the universe and our planet. We also talked about atoms, elements and minerals to understand the rock cycle. However, the occurrence, abundance and how we classify minerals is a key aspect to understand the transformations that take place internally and externally here on the surface of our planet. This video is about how we classify minerals and a review of the main mineral groups that form the rocks that we see all around us. It is important to understand about the materials that compose the air to then piece together the events that have occurred throughout our planet history. Enjoy it and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. The type of minerals, composition and their properties are largely dictated from the availability of elements on the earth. For instance, the most common mineral group on the Earth's crust are the silicates. These are compounds that include the elements silicon and oxygen in varying proportions. Remember that when we review the internal structure of our planet, we refer to the fact that the Earth is organized in layers due to the fact that there is a segregation of the elements due to their composition and properties such as density. Well, the outermost solid layer, the crust, is dominated by three elements. These are oxygen, silicon, and aluminum. When these elements combine, they form the silicates. Although they are the most abundant mineral group, they are not the only one. Depending on their composition, we can also form other mineral groups such as the phosphates, hydrates, halides, and so on. Let's talk about each one of these mineral groups and discuss some of the internal structures and properties. To understand the internal arrangement of minerals and the mineral groups, a good point to start is to ask, how do molecules and compounds form? Well, it has to do with several properties of matter such as electrostatic charges. Remember when we discussed that in nature, solid can be amorphous and crystalline structures. Well, this video deals with crystalline structures, a characteristic unique to minerals. That means that they have their own internal organization. In other words, each particular mineral is arranged in a unique way that makes them very stable in nature. That internal organization is governed by nature's laws, and results in a unique geometrical harmony called crystals. A crystal is a solid in which the atoms are arranged in a regular repeating pattern. From the fundamental forces in nature, the electrical charges of some fundamental particles exert the biggest effect on the properties of the minerals as they are naturally formed substances that tend to be electrically neutral or strive towards a stable form. That means that each particular mineral has a unique chemical composition and way to crystallize, making it particular, thus a different mineral species. The science that studies the internal organization of matter to form the mineral or any substances crystals is called crystallography and is fascinating as it can explain how minerals and rocks are organized internally. This means that it looks at a different scale, thus commonly it requires more advanced analytical techniques. However, for most of us here who live in the surface of our planet, there is no need to have all that advanced equipment, because everything that makes a mineral unique, including its internal organization and the resulting physical properties like their color, luster, and hardness, is here to be seen with our own naked eyes. Minerals are classified based on their internal chemical composition and internal structure. So, let's talk about the main mineral groups, their composition and their physical properties. To date, thousands of minerals have been identified and named. Broadly speaking, they are classified in many mineral groups. However, the rock forming minerals are perhaps only a few dozens. To understand them better, a good beginning is to recognize them following certain criteria. Minerals also follow a degree of hierarchical approach where we classify them into mineral groups and mineral species. They are classified mainly based on their composition and crystallographic arrangements. These are the silicates, native elements, carbonates, halides, oxide, phosphates, sulfates, and sulfates. Silicate minerals. Silicates are by far the largest mineral group. Even magmas can be described as a molten mix of silicates. Feldspar and quartz are the two most common silicate minerals. They are extremely important as rock forming minerals. The basic building blocks of all silicate mineral is the silica tetrahedron, a perfect balanced arrangement of oxygen and silicon that combined result in the wide variety of silicate minerals. This pyramid shaped structure is often bound to other elements, such as 
as calcium, iron, and magnesium to become the most abundant rock-forming minerals, native elements. Gold, silver, and sulfur are examples of native elements. They contain atoms of only one type of element. In nature, only a small number of minerals are found in this category, making some of them quite rare and valuable. Carbonates. Carbonates include other elements, such as calcium, iron, and copper. The basic carbonate structure is one of the carbon atoms bonded to three oxygen atoms. Calcite is the most common carbonate mineral found in this category. Halides. This mineral group is mainly the result of evaporation of water rich in brines. Halide, common table salt, is the most known halide mineral, but not the only one. The chemical elements known as the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, bond with various metallic atoms resulting in other halide minerals. Oxides. Two good examples of this group are the hematite, with two iron atoms to three oxygen atoms, and magnetite, with three iron atoms and four oxygen atoms. As you can see, oxides contain one or two metal elements combined with oxygen. Many important metals are found as oxides. Phosphates. Apatite and turquoise are examples of phosphate minerals. Minerals in this group are similar in atomic structure to the silicate minerals. In the phosphates, phosphorus, arsenic, or vanadium bond to oxygen to form a tetrahedra. There are many different minerals in the phosphate group, but most are rare. Sulfates. Sulfate minerals contain sulfur atoms bonded to oxygen atoms. Like halides, many sulfate minerals form when sulfate bearing water evaporates. The sulfate group contains many different minerals, but only a few are common. Sulfates with calcium include anhydrite and gypsum. Sulfates with barium and strontium are barite and celestite, respectively. Gypsum is a common sulfate with a variety of appearances. Look at this gigantic, milky white crystal star wedding from pearl to ceiling in this cave below near Nica in Mexico. Some of them are almost 12 meters long and 1 meter wide. Even at this massive scale for a mineral, not how they follow the same growing proportions, shape and smooth surfaces. This is the result of an orderly crystalline arrangement and repetitive pattern. Quite an amazing sight. Sulfides. Sulfides are formed when metallic elements combine with sulfur. What sets them apart from sulfates is that sulfides do not contain oxygen. Pyrite or iron sulfide is a common sulfide mineral known as fool's gold. People may mistake pyrite for gold because the two minerals are shiny, metallic, and yellow in color. After all, not everything what shines is gold. Mainly because of their composition and crystallographic arrangements, minerals also exhibit different physical properties. We can start by subdividing this set of properties into two broad categories of optical properties and properties based on their chemical strength. Additional properties are also crystal shape or habit, the density, and also the specific gravity of any particular mineral. Of the many optical properties of minerals, their luster, ability to transmit light, color, and streak are most frequently used for mineral identification. In addition, minerals can be classified based on their chemical strength, based on several properties including tenacity, hardness, cleavage, and fracture. Other properties also include crystal shape or habit, and density and specific gravity. Let's review these properties in more detail. The appearance or quality of light reflected from the surface of a mineral is known as luster. Minerals that have the appearance of metals are referred to have a metallic luster. Most minerals have a non-metallic luster and are described using various adjectives such as vitreous or glassy dull, or earthy, pearly luster, silky luster, or greasy luster. Another optical property used in the identification of minerals is the ability to transmit light. When no light is transmitted, the mineral is described as opaque. When light, but not an image, is transmitted through a mineral sample, the mineral is said to be translucent. When both light and an image are visible through the sample, the mineral is described as transparent. Color is considered a diagnostic property of only a few minerals. The use of color as a means of identification is often ambiguous and even misleading due to the slight impurities in the crystalline structure of a given mineral. For example, quartz may exhibit several varieties including pink, purple, yellow, white, great and even black due to these impurities. A mineral's streak is obtained by rubbing it across a streak plate, like this piece of unglazed porcelain and observing the color of the marked leaves and describing its color. 
For example, metallic minerals generally have a dense, dark streak, whereas minerals with non-metallic luster typically have a light colored streak. Not all minerals produce a streak when rubbed across a streak plate. It depends whether the mineral is harder or weaker than a porcelain streak plate. Therefore, no streak is observed using harder minerals. Another criterion to classify minerals is their chemical strength. This is how easily minerals break or deform under stress. As with many other mineral properties, it is determined by the type and strength of the chemical bonds that hold together the crystals. Mineral strength encompasses several properties that include tenacity, hardness, cleavage, and fracture to describe mineral strength and how minerals break when stress is applied. Tenacity is a mineral's resistance to breaking or deforming. Minerals that are ionically bonded, such as fluorite and halite, tend to be brittle and shatter into small pieces when struck. By contrast, minerals with metallic bones, such as native copper, are malleable or easily hammered into different shapes. Gypsum and talc can be cut into thin shavings and described as sectile. Micas, for example, are very malleable and exhibit elasticity and will bend and snap back to their original shape after stress is released. Hardness is one of the most useful diagnostic properties of any given mineral, a measure of the resistance of a mineral to abrasion or scratching. A common method to assess the hardness of any particular mineral is to use the Moss scale. Introduced in 1812 by the German geologist and mineralogist Frederick Moss, it provides a useful practical qualitative assessment of any mineral hardness based on its relative resistance to scratching. Measured by scratching a particular mineral against another substance. It goes from soft minerals starting at 1 to the hardest known mineral at 10. Most scale is also a qualitative ordinal scale with the end members being talc at 1, those being the softest, and diamond up here occupying the 10th position as the hardest known mineral in nature. Cleavage refers to how minerals tend to break when they are handled and stressed in different ways. This is largely dependent on the structure of many minerals at the atomic level where some bonds are weaker than others. Thus, minerals tend to break along these planes of weak bonding. When this occurs, it results in relatively smooth, flat surfaces that are produced when the mineral is broken. Fracture refers to how minerals break when fractured. Most produce uneven surfaces and are dependent on the internal atomic structure and the arrangement of atoms and bonds in a particular crystalline structure. A good example is quartz, which breaks into smooth curved surfaces called conchoidal fractures. Splintery fractures and fibrous fractures are also fractures commonly found in some minerals in nature. A property that we can appreciate on a hand sample specimen with our own naked eye is the crystal shape or habit. It refers to the common or characteristic shape of a crystal or aggregate of crystals. Minerals exhibit somewhat regular poly that are helpful in their identification. Some minerals tend to grow equally in all three dimensions, whereas others tend to be elongated in one direction or flattened if growth in one dimension is suppressed. Terms commonly used to describe this and other crystal habits include equidimensional, bladed, fibrous, tubular, prismatic, platy, and blocky. A specific gravity is a dimensionless number, unique for each mineral. It represents the ratio of a mineral's weight to the weight of an equal volume of water. Some minerals can also be recognized by other unique characteristics. Halite, ordinary table salt, can be identified through taste. Others can be identified by the feel of them. Talc, for example, feels soapy and graphite feels greasy. Sulfur bearing minerals can be recognized because they smell really bad, for example. Magnetite have a high iron content and can be picked up with a magnet. Some varieties of magnetite actually behave as natural magnets, for example. But here is one of my favorite properties in the whole world of the minerals called by refringence. That means double refraction, a special optical property that some specimens of transparent calcite possess. For example, this sample of Icelandic calcite. Here, when we place it over a printed text, the letters appear twice. Quite an amazing property. Another property that I find very useful when identifying lithologies in sedimentary rocks is effervescence or fissing. It occurs when a low concentration solution of hydrochloric acid gets in touch with a fresh broken mineral surface on carbonates. This is the result of a chemical reaction where dioxide gas is released. Thus, it helps to identify calcite.
Each mineral and rock in nature is unique and has a particular history. It is amazing how orderly crystals are. From a small microscopic scale to the gigantic ones, they form a repetitive structure. Even more fascinating is the fact that when we contemplate a discipline like mineralogy, there are still so many things to understand. The physical properties of any crystal, mineral, or rock in nature is the result of their composition and crystallographic arrangement. The same properties have been imprinted in all minerals from the very beginning of their history, as the fundamental forces of nature have been operated from the very creation of our planet. The minerals and rocks around us are the result of the continuous strive for Earth's materials to find a stable form and constitute an example of how the building blocks of our planet organize internally and externally. Thank you for watching up to this point. I hope this video contributes to increasing your admiration and amazement towards our planet and the way we understand it. Please let me know below in the comment box which one you think is your favorite mineral property and more importantly, why? About me? Well, I must admit that I like the crystal habit. I really like some of the shapes in minerals and how smooth are some crystal faces. Why? Well, because either they are small or big, crystals show exactly the same arrangement and I find that quite amazing. And you? Please let me know in the comment box and I will do my best to answer all of them. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in our next video. Ciao!